En we nemen op. What's going on everybody, my name is Rico Richardson and welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my channel is all about helping you guys edit your photos and your videos professionally, but for free. And in this episode, we're going to edit a photo from one of our subscribers. His name is Amit Gunka. So let's go. And here's the image that we're going to work with. And the reason why I've picked this image to work with is because it's a very challenging image. And that has to do with the fact that We've got some haze over here. So we've got a blue cast, which is uh, normal because the further the distance is, the more light bounces into the sky and stuff like that. Ozone and all kinds of things. So the further you go, the more bluish things start to look when you've got a clear day. As a result, let me show you guys that this is the end result. And I'm going to explain to you guys why I've changed the color of the grass in a minute. So let me put those side by side, so orientation, lens correction. So here we have the original one, and I'm moving this to the right. And here we have the new version. So you see a clear difference between the two of them. So let me deselect the snapshot. Let me hit the compress history stack, and let's start working on this image. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys that I've put all the modules that we're going to use in the favorites over here. You can find them in the group menus up here, or you can find them using the more modules and then scroll down through the list, click one and it'll pop up in your favorites. I'll be sure to mention all the modules that I'm going to use and I'm going to put like a sticker on the bottom with the text saying which modules I'm working on so you guys can follow along more easily. The first thing that I want to do is I want to get rid of the haze. So that's the first thing. So for that, I'm going to use the haze removal. I'm going to activate it. And not a lot is happening to this image, but if you go to the uniformly button, we're going to change the blend mode. Darktable has a lot of different blend modes and each has its own characteristics and changes the image accordingly. So let's say you use overlay, it's very dark and you can use multiply. So it multiplies the pixels. But for this image, we're going to use the hard light. And this looks way too strong. This looks absolutely horrible. But the haze is already a lot less than before. So let me show you guys. So here it is with and here it is without. But I'm going to change the opacity to around 80%. And that already makes a huge difference. It's not as dark as it was before. So that's it for the haze removal. If you want to increase the haze removal, all you got to do is use this button, move it to the left or to the right. Right will increase it and left will decrease the strength. I'm going to double click it to make sure that it's back to 0 0.20. And now what I want to do is I want to change the exposure of this image. And I'm going to change the exposure of the entire image. So I'm not going to use a mask of any sort. I'm just going to tone it down and you might wonder why would you do that? It's already very dark, but don't worry. We're going to brighten it up later on, but I want to preserve some of the highlights and stuff like that. You can use different modules for that, but for this tutorial and this specific image, this is the way that I'm going to do it. So we're going to tone down the exposure by quite a bit. And that has made the image a lot more dark already, but I'm going to brighten it up using the tone curve module. So let me activate that one and I'm going to use a mask, a drawn mask, and I'm going to use a gradient mask. So I'm going to click it. I'm going to put it inside the image and everything in the gray area will be affected and everything in the white area won't be affected. I'm going to rotate it a little bit. I'm going to increase the feathering and now I'm going to move back up. I'm just going to increase this part of the image going to decrease the highlights a little bit. So you see that this area is becoming a lot more bright and this area stays a lot more dark. You can change the feathering if you don't like it, if you want the borders to be less visible. So I'm just going to make sure that it all looks natural without any halos. And after we've done that, it's time to add some contrast to this image. So for that, I decided the local contrast is the best one for this image. I'm going to activate it and I'm not going to change any of the values of this module, 
but I am going to make it in half. So once again, hit the uniformly button and then change the blend mode from normal to opacity. And that means that the strength of these values will be decreased by a half. And now we're going to move on to one of my favorite modules, which is the basic adjustment module, because what we've done is we've decreased the haze in the image. We've kind of leveled it out a little bit, and now it's time to build up this image even more. So we're going to open up the basic adjustments, and I'm going to increase the black point a little bit. I'm going to compress the highlights a little bit, and that's all for this image. So let me close that one down, and I want to change the input color profile. It's got standard color matrix. Working profile is the linear rec 202. Uh, I'm just going to change that to sRGB web safe. And you see that it became a little bit more light, but this changes the way this image is being processed. So I'm going to close that one down. And now it's time to target the grass. I'm going to explain to you guys right now why I decided to change the grass into orange because it's a very contrasty color in comparison to the blue haze. So basically we're going to create an orange and teal type of image, but we're only going to do that because we've got the blue haze. So I'll link a color wheel up here and that will show you guys that you need to make sure that you use opposite colors when you're going for contrast while using colors. So that's the reason why we're going to color the grass orange. Let's go. And I'm going to use a color zones module for that. So what we need to do is we need to hit the U tab, then click this symbol, the color picker, and then make sure we select the grass. So I already had it selected over here. And you see that the colors that are over here are now in this spectrum. So I'm just going to drag these into the oranges and you see that the grass is starting to change. Now, I don't mind that it's still got a cast over here because the light is coming in from the top. So I'm not quite worried about that. You could always drag this one down a little bit as well. Move this one back up. And now you see that we're starting to get a contrast between the blue colors over here and then the orange in the grass. And if this isn't strong enough for you, all you got to do is drag it down a little bit more. You see into the reds. And now the colors are a lot more stronger than they were before. And what I want to do to get rid of this haze some more is to decrease the saturation of this. So we're going to use a second instance, new instance. And I want to make sure that we're going to select this color only by using the same method. There we go. And now the blues are in here. So I'm just going to drag this down a little bit to desaturate it. There we go. And now you see that the blue cost is already a lot less than it was before. And together with this orange type color, it's very contrasty like. And if this isn't too much, you can always go back to the color zones and maybe drag in some more. So we've got some more orange over here that looks a lot more natural. I'm going to keep everything as is. I'm not going to use a parametric mask or anything. This is just a quick edit to show you guys how much of a difference this can make. And there's two more things that I like to do to this image. The first thing is change the white balance to make it even warmer. And the second thing as a final thing is the lens correction. Oh wait, and I just decided we're going to add in some denoise. And let's open up the white balance and let's change the temperature to 7000 to make the image overall a little bit warmer than it was before. And now I'm just going to close that one down, activate the lens corrections module. And the final thing that I want to do is use the denoise profile one, activate it. I'm not going to change anything else. This will just clean up the image. And there you go. Here we have the end result. So once again, a before and after. So we've got this image that we started with, take a snapshot. And now let's see how it looks. There you go. 